All right, flight controls. First thing I'm going to talk about is the force trim. The force trim um, is there to allow me to position the flight control in a desired position and uh, you know maintain that desired position without having to physically do that. So we do that by interrupting the force trim. So the force trim release switch is right here. I'm going to go to the 12 o'clock position, which turns off the magnets at the base of the uh, cyclic and pedal pedals only and allows me to freely move that flight control. So if I press and hold the force trim interrupted, move the cyclic forward, and then let go of the force trim, I'm going to, I'm a central position trimmer guy, so I got to let my stick go back to center. That's that little jump there. But notice the uh, flight control is being maintained in that position. If I take and put in a little bit of forward, aft, left, right cyclic, it will return to center. I can also put in a little bit of left cyclic, maybe right there. All right, cool. And now it will maintain that position uh, until I retrim the aircraft and bring the flight controls back to you know a neutral position or the desired position, right? So I'm going to bring the cyc or the uh, cyclic back to neutral. I'm going to press and hold that force trim, move the flight control back, right there, boom. And now the flight control is back to neutral. If I go to the outside view here, look to the side. If I put in a little bit of forward cyclic, I tilt the disc forward, and then I let go of the cyclic. It goes right back to where it started. Um, that's because I have trimmed the cyclic to neutral. All right, now I'm going to press and hold the force trim, apply a little bit of forward cyclic, release the force trim, and now notice the disc angle stays right where it is. This is how I control the helicopter, right? If I want to go forward, I have to adjust, apply forward cyclic, which is going to tilt the disc forward, which is going to direct thrust horizontally as well as vertically to move the helicopter forward, all right? Um, the stabler on, on, stabilator on the back there is also going to schedule to help maintain a level fuselage attitude based on the orientation of the rotor disc. All right, that's how I fly a helicopter. That's how I control a helicopter. The force trim is there to allow me to position that flight control without having to physically hold that flight control in position the entire time I'm flying. So it gives me a little bit of a uh, hands-off or a little bit of a reprieve from having to physically hold the flight control in a desired position for the entire flight. All right, and we can see that I've got a little bit of forward cyclic there. Control indicator tells me that as well. So I'm going to release that for, or press the force, interrupt the force trim, move the cyclic back to center, release force trim, boom, it's going to maintain that position. If I go back outside, the disc is back to level. All right. For us, talking about the stabilator real quick, for us, the normal uh, wings level attitude, about five degrees below hover. Um, is a 90 knot attitude. That's typically what we're flying at there. The stabilator is going to schedule to try and, and help maintain that as well. Uh, it's kind of cool. All right, so now we've got the force trim out of the way. I'm going to talk about the uh, FMC real quick. So what I'm going to do here, uh, let's see, let's bring this up over here. I'm going to bring this up real quick. So we've got a couple different levels. This is just how I'm going to use how I'm going to explain this for you. So we've got level zero. FMC is off. It's a mechanical input and the force trim. That's it. That's all I've got. So uh, the aircraft is going to be unstabilized. There's no SAS. There's no CAS. There is nothing helping me uh, fly the helicopter. I am all of that. With one except or not not an exception, but with one uh, additional detractor here, right? That FMC off means uh, that, you know, I don't have the command augmentation system. Command augmentation system makes up for um, slop or, or play in the mechanical flight controls, so the helicopter is going to be very sluggish uh, and slow to respond to your flight control inputs, all right? Force trim is still there, so you can still fly it the same way. Um, it just, there's nothing helping you, all right? Level one is going to be FMC on with the force trim interrupted. This gives you only the command augmentation system. This is why when you go from level zero, unstabilized flight, um, to level one, you have a very crisp responding helicopter. It, it does everything you want it to do um, without, without any issues. It's, it's very responsive, right? If I go to level two, the only thing that's changed is I have let go of the force trim switch, all right? So now I gain the stability augmentation system in addition to the command augmentation system and the heading hold. So SAS gives me the rate damping, atmospheric upset damping, turn coordination greater than 40 knots. And then it gives me the heading hold anytime the helicopter is off the uh, weight on wheel switch um, or the squat switch, which is located on that left main landing gear. And again, you have to have force trim uh, not interrupted. So you gotta, you gotta let go of the button, right? Um, 
you go to level three, now you've engaged a hold mode, maybe attitude hold. Um, well, you have engaged attitude hold. And so you still have your heading hold. Now you have your attitude hold, still have all the SAS stuff. And this is, you're not interrupting the force trim. Every time you interrupt the force trim in two levels two or three, you am automatically go right back to level one, where it's just the command augmentation system only. That's it. All right. So if I turn off all the force trim channels, or FMC channels, excuse me, that is going to put me at level zero. All right, if I re-engage all of my FMC channels and I'm not interrupting the force trim, I'm at level two. If I interrupt the force trim, which I'm about to do to pick the helicopter up to a hover, I'm gonna be in level one, meaning that I only have the command augmentation system. So let me center that up. So uh, first things first, let's trim this aircraft here. There we go. That's where the default position for the pedal should be. Now as I'm coming up to a hover, um, I'm actually going to press and hold the force trim, start increasing the collective, bringing the helicopter up to a hover. I'm waiting for the tailwheel unlock or tailwheel lock select light to go out, indicating that I'm no longer or that the aircraft is light on the wheels. Now I'm going to release the force trim, go to level uh, two which means I now have the SAS to kind of help me out, plus heading hold. I'm just going to use a little bit of pedal to kind of help the heading hold. Oop. Need a little bit more right cyclic there. Whee, there we go. And you can see the green plus sign there, that's the SAS. You can see that it's actually doing some work to try and help stabilize the helicopter for us. All right, let me get back outside instead of chasing symbology here. There we go. So now I am back in, I am in level two. Force trim is not interrupted. And the aircraft just requires a little bit of, you know, pressure counter pressure on the cyclic, pressure counter pressure on the pedals to kind of help maintain um, position. Now I'm going to engage attitude hold. Maybe. There we go. Attitude hold is engaged. So now that I've got attitude hold engaged, I'm in level three. All right. I'm in position hold specifically because I'm less than five knots of ground speed. So the aircraft is going to do its level best to maintain position. I've got heading hold. It's a nice, stable platform. If I take and press and hold the force trim, again, I'm going to go all the way back to level one, command augmentation only. Um, so that's kind of how all of that works. Now I'm going to increase the collective just a little bit, come up to five feet, gauge the altitude hold. Altitude hold is on. I'm in the radar altitude hold sub mode because I'm less than 1,428 feet and less than 40 knots. Uh, so that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, if I want to climb, I don't have to disengage at altitude hold. All I have to do is increase the collective greater than about a quarter inch, a little bit more, right there. And it's going to automatically kick off the uh, altitude hold and allow me to go to my desired altitude. Once I get to my desired altitude, I can then re-engage that altitude hold, and it will now maintain that new reference altitude. All right. Then once I'm up here, again, I can take and press and hold the force trim. Now I'm in level one, command augmentation only. I am the heading hold. I am the stability augmentation system, and I'm trying to maintain my position. A little bit of pedal here. All right. There we go. If I reduce the collective greater than about a quarter inch from the reference position, when the uh, altitude hold was set, it will disengage the altitude hold as well. All right, so still holding the force trim interrupted. Right about here, I'm happy looking, facing this direction. I'm going to release the force trim. Now, heading hold uh, re-engages, or reactivates, I guess I could say. Uh, come back to center. Whee! All right, just trying to get her back under control. All right, see, that's what happens when you don't fly the aircraft to a trim state. So now I'm going to kind of get the helicopter back to where it needs to be. A little bit of half cyclic, get the aircraft under control. There we go. So I'm in level uh, two right now because the force trim is not interrupted and I don't have a hold mode on. So now I'm going to trim. Everything's stable, nice, stable um, aircraft. I can go ahead and engage the attitude, altitude hold, boom. And now the aircraft will maintain its position and do what it's supposed to do. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about with that? Oh, that's the other thing. Anytime you press and hold that force trim interrupted, um, you are commanding the SAS sleeve to center, all right? Um, this is, whenever we talk about fly the helicopter to a trim state, this is how you're supposed to do it. Press and hold the force trim, put the flight controls where you want them, get the aircraft all, you know, the desired 
uh, rate of climb, the desired airspeed, all that kind of stuff, and then release the force trim. You've now given the SAS the maximum amount of authority to be able to uh, maintain that position, or at least assist in maintaining that position. Uh, it's really not maintaining anything until you engage a hold mode. Once you've engaged a hold mode, now it is actually trying to actively hold an attitude, velocity, position, whatever the case may be, or altitude um, as well. Prior to that, you know, just the stability augmentation system is trying to maintain a stable platform uh, through its available functions. So that's how all that works. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it'll uh, kind of demystify some of what's going on. And uh, have a good one.